Hi everyone, this is Natalie with the Santa Cruz Museum of Natural History. Today, I'd like to show you a quick activity to help you explore both the natural world and some human-made aspects of your neighborhood. Have you ever looked at different light bulbs and noticed that some are different colors than others? You may have thought those light bulbs were made of different materials or elements, and that's absolutely right. In fact, the study of different sources of light and their elements is an important part of science known as spectroscopy. Astronomers use spectroscopy to look at different stars and planets. They can find out what the star is made of or how old it is. Astronomers have even used spectroscopy to look at planets outside of our solar system and determine which ones have oxygen in their atmosphere. You can see this effect in nature. Rainbows are made when tiny drops of water in the air break down sunlight from a single ray of white light into its full spectrum of colors. But when you look at light that isn't sunlight, like this fluorescent light bulb, you get something very different. Instead of a full rainbow spectrum, some colors are missing. That's because the chemicals in this light bulb, like mercury or phosphorus, have absorbed those particular colors. We call this its absorption spectrum. Every element has a different absorption spectrum, so when you look at a light's absorption spectrum, you can figure out what elements are in that light. To do this, we're going to make our own spectrometer. To make your own spectrometer, you're going to need a marker, scissors or a craft knife, tape or glue, a CD, used or blank. You may not have a CD yourself, but ask your parents if they have one somewhere. A DVD will also work. Thin cardboard. As for me, I am reusing this empty box of crackers. An empty paper towel roll. I don't want to have one of those right now, but I do have a toilet paper roll, which means I'm actually excited to have run out of toilet paper. However, a longer tube definitely gets you better results. Lastly, for taking data, you'll want our light spectra activity worksheet. If you don't have access to a printer, you can make your own by writing down the questions and drawing in a rainbow band for reference. There's a lot of steps in making your spectrometer, but they're all easy to do. The first step is to take your roll in your cardboard and outline three circles. The circles don't have to be perfect. As you can see, mine look like amoebas. Then you'll cut out the three circles. It's a good idea to make your cuts a little bigger than the circles themselves. Next, take one of the circles and draw a small rectangle just big enough for your eye to look through. Cut out the rectangle. Take your second circle and cut it in half. Then you'll tape or glue the halves barely spaced apart right over your first circle. As you can see, your rectangle is now a tiny slit. This lid is what you will be looking through. You'll now want to attach the lid to the roll. If you want, you can cut the lid to exactly fit over the tube to make it look prettier. For me, so long as my spectrometer does science, it's as pretty as it needs to be. The one thing I do want to make sure of is that it is tightly attached so that no light gets through. The next step is fun. Notice how CDs have a rainbow sheen? They are a perfect diffraction gradient. That is, they break apart light. It's the key component to our homemade spectrometer but we do have to get rid of the paint on top. Scratch at the CD until some of the paint flakes off. Then put tape right over that scratch. Peel off the tape and you peel off the paint. You don't need to do this for the entire CD, just enough to cover the lid of the roll. If you don't mind the CD being destroyed, you can cut the CD into the size of the roll. Only do this if you have adult supervision and good scissors. Plastics are very sharp when cut. If you do this, make sure the cut edges are covered in a thick tape. If you skip this sec, that's fine. Just attach the CD to the end of the roll. Now, with your last cardboard circle, cut out a large rectangle. This rectangle should go almost to the edge of the cardboard. Tape or glue that rectangle over your CD. And now you have a working spectrometer. An optional step is to decorate it. I'm not artistic myself, but I will put this duct tape over my tube. The tape will cover all of the edges, make sure that the tube is darker. 
Also, now my tube is covered in owls. Win-win! Now it's time to take data. For a control, we're going to look at the spectrum of sunlight. It's very important to never look at the sun directly. In fact, you'll get the best results when your spectrometer is just to the side of the light you're looking at. Now, if you angle your spectrometer close to the sun, you'll see a full rainbow spectrum inside of your spectrometer. Next, look at a light bulb inside of your house through your spectrometer. You might see a rainbow spectrum, but do you notice any colors that are missing? Mark down on your worksheet the lines or bands of colors that you don't see. What's happening is that the components or the elements in your light bulb have absorbed those colors of light. The technical term for that is to say that their electrons are excited, which is one of my favorite scientific phrases to say. Now choose a different light bulb or flashlight. Does it have a different absorption spectrum as the first light bulb? Why do you think that is? Again, mark down any colors or bands that are missing. Do the same thing again to a couple of other sources of light. If you know of anywhere with a neon sign, definitely take a look at that through your spectrometer. Does the neon sign have just one or multiple colors? How do the different colored lights on the same sign compare? The worksheet shows some absorption spectrums of a couple of different elements commonly found in light bulbs, so let's look at the data on your worksheet. Do any of those absorption spectra match what you saw? Write it down. You've just managed to figure out what key elements are in those light bulbs. Astronomers, chemists, and other scientists use those same ideas to figure out what materials in and out of this world are made out of. And when you look at the different aspects of color and composition, you'll discover so much about the world you live in. Thank you for participating in my light spectra activity, and look forward to seeing you sometime at the Santa Cruz Museum of Natural History.